You've all uh, heard me say, I think, you know, that, uh, that God scooped up the dust of the earth and breathed his breath into it and created us from nothing, right? We're, we're, without God, we're nothing. Everything that we have is a gift from God. Everything, all that we are, all of our talents, all of our gifts, everything except our sin is given to us by God. And that essentially, that sentiment is, was given to us in very kind of long and poetic words in the first reading today. I don't know if you remember the first reading, but it's like, okay, you're a, you're a child that's been neglected and abandoned and, you know, you have nothing. You know, you, you've grown up and, and I have come to your rescue, you're a child. And so it was, as I was reading it this morning, it's, I mean, it's kind of, uh, it makes an impression. I don't know if it made an impression on you, but, but then I thought, well, what's the impression it's trying to make? It's trying to make this. I have bestowed all of these gifts on you and some people don't know how to act when they're given all these gifts. They all of a sudden think, oh, it's my beauty, it's my goodness, it's my crown, it's my gold, it's my silver, I did all of this. And then they, then they turn their back on God. And God is, is saying, essentially, you're captivated by your own beauty. You used your renown to make yourself a harlot. You lavished your harlotry. You know, basically, you started taking the affection of, of, of worldly things. And you traded my love for you for the world. So that's the, and then the really interesting, and he says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover you with shame. And how is he going to cover this harlot with shame? Do you remember what it said? I'm going to cover you with shame. I'm going to utterly silence you when I pardon you. You know, and so there's a lot to meditate on. God's mercy. When we, when we take a step back and we see our sinfulness in the light of God's mercy, it humbles us. But God humbles us so that he can do what for us? So he can lift us up. So beautiful, poetic, rich reading there. And you know, when I read Matthew 19, and Matthew 19 is a powerful gospel, a challenging husbands and wives to recognize the permanence of marriage. And uh, the apostles, they understood exactly what Jesus was saying. And you know how we know they understood exactly the measure that he was holding before them of the permanence of marriage. Like Moses gave you this permission, but that is not what I'm giving you. Because their response to Jesus is, well, it's better not to get married in that case. It's too risky. So we pray for marriages. We pray for holy marriages. We pray that in our sinfulness, that as we are pardoned by God, that we would be humbled. But in our humility, we would be lifted up to the glory that God has for us.